am a, um, I am um, the uh, CEO and president of uh, uh, IHI, and uh, I'm also a professor at the University of British Columbia. Uh, I'm a cardiovascular and thoracic surgeon by training. Now I am retired from my healthcare duties, and I'm spending my full time on the development of technology for, for medical education. Uh, or we can say technology enabled learning. So that's that's me. Thank you. Lovely, thank you. Uh, so I think what we'll do is I will I'll start with a introduction to cyber patient. Uh, we'll, we're going to take you into the product and platform, and then if uh, towards the end, uh, perhaps there'll be some there'll be some questions. Uh, that can be answered, of course, by Dr. Kimi, and, and perhaps maybe Dr. Kimi can give some additional notes and comments on um, simulation education and how it can be best utilized in your programs. So without uh, any further delay, I'm just going to share my screen here, and we will jump right into it. Right. So you should be able to see my screen. Uh, so cyber patient, just as a, as a very quick intro. Um, so we like to say bridge the gap, you know, bridging the gap between the theory and the practice of medicine. And we do this through uh, simulation. So the cyber patient, the best way to look at it is that it is a virtual training hospital on demand available 24 seven uh, for your students or for your faculty to use um, with, with, the, uh, with the students. 130 virtual patients peer reviewed of both inpatient and outpatient uh, cases. We cover 13 different uh, healthcare systems. Inside of the platform, of course, you will find thousands of diagnostic and animated assets. And these are all used for the physical examination procedures surgery and the diagnosis of those virtual uh, patients. The platform is competency-based learning. We focus very much also on experiential learning, so learning by doing, and it does cover the full continuum of care. So um, as you know, from the introduction of the patient into the office to the, to the goodbye of the patient. So after you've gone through the whole um, healthcare walkthrough from you know, the physical examination, the diagnosis, and to the treatment of that patient. Also inside of the platform, what you will value from is the 750 educational resources, which include curriculum modules, videos, lectures, webinars, research papers, publications, and additional uh, learning objects. And we'll share that with you shortly as well. Lastly, this is a textbook come to life. So as you will see inside of the platform, as your students are working through uh, medical and clinical textbooks, there will be um, simulations and the platform will be able to work alongside with the students. Now, important to look at and to understand the use of cyber patient. It is not designed to replace theoretical knowledge, physical clinical skills or standardized patient programs but it is rather a supportive tool to help students go through the first three stages of the four stages of learning, which is introduction, coaching, and fine tuning. Designed to enhance compiled thinking, recall recognition while using visual, tactile, and written memory in a safe virtual environment. And so the platform does offer a lot of flexibility for the institutions and how they will implement into their curriculum, or for use as an extracurricular activity. Uh, we do have a whole lecture expert, uh, expert series by Dr. Kiyumi on theories behind the education, competency-based education. I am gonna share these links out with you at, towards the end of the event. But if you do have time, take care, take some time and um, do watch the expert series. Now, CyberPatient is a stepwise learning progression platform. 
And what we mean by this is that it can support every level of medical education. So every case that we have, 130 cases, they can all be broken down into four different skill levels. Level one is simply history taking. So developing a logical approach to patient presented problems while using didactic reasoning to analyze the information received from the patient and improve the history taking skills. Level two includes the physical examination. So developing an understanding of the general physical examination, special physical exams, students practice logical approaches to connect the information received from the patient's history with a physical examination and determining a list of hypotheses or the provisional diagnosis. Now level three and level four take the students through the full continuum of care. And what you will see on level three, after three consecutive mistakes, it will push the student to the next stage of care. And on level four, it will actually reset the case after three consecutive mistakes. So if you look at uh, just a, as a visual of how every case is designed or structured, we start off with the history taking, level one, level two physical exam, then level three, so the investigation and analysis, the planning and the case management, diagnosis and treatment, the review of the diagnosis, next steps, follow-up, and the case closure, and then medical records updates. And then also inside of the platform, a really nice added value that we, that we provide is time and cost awareness for the students. And we'll go into more details about that as we go through the, go through the platform. Now, where can cyber patient fit into the learning journey is also extremely important. So we talk about textbook alignment. So cyber patient will support problem-based case-based learning activities, preparation for stimulation training or standard and also standardized patient programs. And then on the clinical side, levels one and levels two will support an introduction to a clinical environment, level three, a preparation for a clerkship and level four for internship. Uh, before we jump into the platform, there's a couple ways that the platform can be utilized. So as we talk, um, the, the best way of course is for curriculum integration. However, it can also be utilized as a self-learning tool. So we do have an integrated intelligent tutoring system inside of the platform. So we'll continually provide feedback to the student as they work and they complete cases. On the integration for the curriculum, we do provide a formative feedback as well as a summative assessment. So this is a very transparent way to communicate with the students to see how they've performed, evaluate their clinical reasoning, and of course, um, uh, communicate directly with those students. On the summative assessment, it's a perfect way to round up a course. Um, and also prepare them for promotion into their medical programs. Lastly, before we jump into the product, we do have a number of different research papers and I am gonna share these, these uh, research papers out with you. But a couple of the findings that we have had is that cyber patient is as effective as using standardized patients in delivery of the practical knowledge for novice medical students. And cyber patient is more economically rewarding we can also see this uh, paper from Japan here, from Kochi University. Um, cyber patients are more effective than text only learning for physical examinations. Weaker and average students perform better on OSCE exams. But I'm gonna share these papers out with you towards the end. And for now, we're gonna jump right into the cyber patient platform. And I'm going to take you into our faculty dashboard to start. So as I mentioned, cyber patient can be utilized in two different ways. One can be a self-learning tool. So if you're a healthcare librarian and you're looking for an interactive uh, learning resource for your institution, your students, we, we do have that available. Or as recommended, we do suggest for a, a stronger impact and the efficacy of the product to be demonstrated is for a curriculum integration. So starting off, we're gonna go into our settings. As a faculty member, you'll see your personal information, 
you'll be able to put your first name, last name, your signature. This will be used on the summative assessment. As a reminder, we can also change the skill sets to level one, history taking, level two, history taking and the physical examination, level three, full continuum of care with three consecutive mistakes, and then level four as well, three consecutive mistakes will reset the case. So back into our dashboard, we will create a class and we will just go cyber patient South Africa introduction and welcome to cyber patient. So your class name, description of the class, you're gonna enter your course period. So if you like it just as a one day, you can, for an exam, you can do an exam or you can run it for a full semester or a week, depending on the course. You set your faculty, you set your skill level. Today, we're going to take you through skill level three and you will set a required passing percentage for your student. On the right-hand side, you do have the option for a customized summative assessment. We have a default one, uh, a default assessment already put in place. So four points, a 25% a point. The student has completed all of their assignments. The student has responded to the feedback and has worked to improve clinical skills, clinical reasoning, and critical thinking. Student has reached the required level of performance, and the student has had a good overall attitude towards the online educational process. So we will complete that. I'm not sure what happened there. Sorry. Complete. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to add students. So I'm going to add a couple students into our class. And one more. Let me see. There we go. So I've added three students into my class. And now we're going to take a look at the case library. So as I mentioned, we do cover 13 different systems, 130 different cases. So CNS, cardiac, ENT, gastrointestinal, denutriary, musculoskeletal, neoplasms, obstetrics, pediatrics, psychiatry, respirology, and surgery. So for today, what we're going to do is we're gonna use a GI case, but what you're gonna see here as a faculty member is you will see the name of the patient, you will see the diagnosis of the patient. And you're also going to see the learning objectives. Now the learning objectives are aligned with the MCC, Medical Council of Canada, but they're very clear objectives. So given a patient with chronic abdominal pain, the candidate will, you know, one, two, three. And so you as a faculty, you will be able to go through all of this content and these learning objectives and make sure that they do align with your program and with your required goals and objectives. So I'm gonna add just a couple cases into today's class and I'll click done. And now I can see that the class is created. Now I'm gonna invite Nikki to join us and she's going to take us through the student experience. Lovely, thank you, Mark. Hi everyone, I will be uh, walking you through the student experience. Uh, first starting off with uh, the student dashboard. Okay, so we're going to log in here and we'll see the classes that I'm enrolled in uh, and the summary of my last case performance. I'm also able to see and change my skill level. Uh, so let's open up today's class. Uh, here we see the parameters that Professor Mark has just set. Uh, we have the recommended skill level, required passing percentage, and my course performance summary will update as I go throughout and complete cases. Uh, we see the cases assigned to this class. And once I complete a, a case, uh, my instructor can leave formative assessment or formative feedback, which will be shown here. Uh, so today we'll be walking through Jeremy Ramsey. Uh, by clicking on the patient, we see an overview of his profile. And if I need any refreshers before beginning, I can click uh, and each section of the case has a tutorial uh, that can further support me. Uh, 
And before we begin, I would like to note that I do not have a medical background, so please do not worry. I will not be treating real patients anytime soon. Hello, I'm Dr. Smith. I'm the on-call doctor today. Hello, Dr. Smith. So every case begins with history taking. Uh, we can see up here that I can translate the interface into 72 different languages. I also have my patient chart, uh, which I can fill in my findings and provide reasoning. And there are tips here for novice chart takers. I'll also bring you to our help button. Uh, by clicking it, I'm prompted to watch a tutorial on this section, and there are some FAQs. Uh, so back to the case. Uh, our history taking is designed with medical school's uh, classic method for history taking. At CyberPatient, we say we bring that textbook to life. Uh, and we can see categories here. Uh, we've got patient information, chief complaint, history of present illness, and so forth. So I'm able to enter a category and ask a question. What is your name and age? My name is Jeremy Ramsey and I am 37 years old. I can go into chief complaint. What seems to be the problem today? I have heartburn and burning pain in my lower chest. And these questions are scored based on relevancy. So if I ask a question that is irrelevant to the case, so for example, How is your financial situation? Good. We'll see at the end that this is less relevant. Uh, and navigating through these categories is directed towards beginner students. Uh, but as I become more comfortable with history taking, I can search directly uh, for questions to ask our patient. Do you eat spicy food? Yes. I love spicy food. Or, does alcohol make the pain worse? Yes, it does. And we have around uh, 200, uh, 150 to 200 questions available per case. Uh, for the interest of time, we'll not go through them all today. Uh, but how I would complete history taking is I'd fill in my patient chart. So I'd add my chief complaint and my hypothesis. Uh, and this will be uh, saved throughout, and not only will I have access to this at the end of the case, uh, but so will my instructor. We'll save and close and proceed to the next stage. Thanks for the information. At this time, I would like to do physical examination. Please let me know if you feel uncomfortable. I will wash my hands before we start. So now we are on to physical examination. Uh, this section is based on experiential learning. So this is learning by doing. And we see here uh, that I actually have to manually perform these exams, an opportunity that a textbook does not provide. Uh, and so we have general exams and special exams. Our general exams have three components, vitals, methods of examination, and diagnostic instruments. Uh, so let's first start by taking Jeremy's pulse. Please give me your wrist so that I may check your pulse. I'll start and stop the timer, and I can count the pulse over here. Uh, now if we go into blood pressure. Please put your arm in this cuff so I can check your blood pressure. Notice how I, how I have to manually pump the manometer and then release the pressure. From here, I would determine the systolic and diastolic pressures. I'm also able to zoom into specific areas. I'm going to take a closer look at your head. So I'm prompted to use tools such as the speculum. Please tilt your head up so I may use this speculum. The tongue depressor. Please let me use this tongue depressor to examine your mouth. An otoscope. Please sit still so I can use an otoscope to examine your ears. And lastly. Please look into the light on the ophthalmoscope. And if there were any pathological changes, this would be displayed in Jeremy's imagery. Now if I zoom into his chest. I'm going to take a closer look at your torso. I can perform an auscultation. I will use my stethoscope to examine you. And there are clues here on where to place the stethoscope, uh, directed towards more novice students. So I will hold and listen. and I can rotate the patient around. Please turn, please turn. And continue to listen. I will use my stethoscope to examine you. And the bronchial sounds above here.
I can perform percussion. I will inspect you by performing further examination. Notice the resonant and dullness sounds featured. And lastly, if I lie the patient down, please lay down. I can listen to his stomach. I will use my stethoscope to examine you. And I can start with a superficial palpation. I will investigate using my hands. Please let me know if you feel uncomfortable. And once completing the superficial palpation, I will follow up with a deep palpation. I will investigate using a little more pressure. Please let me know if you feel any pain. And once we've completed with our general exams, I can proceed on to special exams. Uh, for this section, we provide animation, and I'm able to navigate through categories. Let's go into gastrointestinal. We can perform a palpation of the spleen. I am going to palpate your abdomen for your spleen. Let me know if you feel any pain. Please take a deep breath. Please take a deep breath. Spleen is not palpable. And navigating through the categories is directed towards uh, beginner students. Uh, but as I advance, I can search for exams directly. Uh, and there are a list of exams that I can perform. After examining your patient, do you believe they require any immediate care? And now on to uh, ancillary care. So we have just seen a level one and level two uh, and where that would end off at. And we are here now at where level three and level four would continue. Uh, so this is where the decision-making begins. Uh, so the patient does not need any immediate care. What is your provisional diagnosis? And I would refer, refer back to my original hypothesis uh, when making the provisional diagnosis. Now, if I make an error, I'm prompted with this message. Incorrect. Please try again. And I'm given the option to redeem myself. Please select the lab test that you require. Now into investigations, I can navigate through categories. Let's perform a blood test and do a CBC. The results will immediately appear and I'm able to select on a row for a value to show. So for example, white blood cells, or I can select all for a full panel. And I can search for tests as well. So let's start with an X-ray of the chest. Findings and impression are on the left and I can click uh, to get a better view of the scan. Uh, let's perform one more test here and do an ultrasound of the whole abdomen. Report on the left and click to expand. Now, any test uh, that you can do or perform in a medical lab or hospital, you can perform on the cyber patient platform. What is your final diagnosis? Uh, for our final diagnosis, we can confirm that Jeremy has gastro reflux. What would be your management plan for this patient? Uh, we now transition into the management and treatment plan. Uh, so this will be non-invasive. That's correct. How would you like to proceed? Uh, we'll be, we will send the patient home. Uh, with some at-home orders. So Jeremy can be active as tolerated, and diet will be non-MPO, and diet as tolerated. Uh, for recommendations, uh, we can refer a team, uh, or for recommendations, uh, we can type by keyword here, uh, and we'll also tell him to limit spicy food and avoid large meals. Now on to referrals is where we will refer our team. Uh, so I will also refer a dietitian to further support the patient. And, and on to medications. Uh, so we have around 5,000 medications available on the cyber patient platform. I can search here by keyword uh, and I can choose the strength, the frequency and the duration. I'm also able to leave some instructions. So take with eight ounces of water. 
And we have the North American trade names featured on our platform, uh, but we also have WHO's ATC classification, uh, which is seen in this row above here. And our last step, uh, Jeremy can meet with his primary care provider in about one month. You are ready to go home now. We wish you a speedy recovery. So congratulations, we have just completed our first cyber patient case together. Uh, and as you can see, the intelligent tutoring system has automatically calculated my score based on three indicators, knowledge, time, and the cost of care. Uh, and these indicators are broken up into each level as well. So for example, if we open up history taking, we see the score, the cost, and the total time. Uh, by clicking on feedback, I am able to see my decisions. Uh, and I did quite poor here because I only asked of three most relevant questions. And as we can see, asking about the financial situation uh, was less relevant to the case and I did not receive any points for this. Uh, what I would now do as a student, I turn to my right and I would see most relevant choices that I can study uh, and learn from and know to ask next time. If we go into the diagnosis, uh, I can see that I got 50% on the provisional. By clicking on feedback, uh, I see that I selected uh, colon cancer, which was incorrect. But by the time of the final diagnosis, I learned from my mistakes uh, and I was able to score 100%. And why this a detailed level of feedback is important is textbooks don't provide this ability. Uh, and with our intelligent tutoring system, I'm able to pinpoint areas that I need to perf um, that I need to improve on. Uh, and this detailed level of feedback is not available uh, in hospitals as resources are limited. Uh, and so the last uh, thing here I'd like to show you is our patient chart. Uh, it's been saved as I go throughout, uh, and I can export this as a PDF uh, or print it out. And my instructor will have access to this full page as well. And before I pass it back over to Professor Mark, I would like to show you our educational resources section. Uh, so this is an additional uh, feature offered to all cyber patient users, uh, and it's around 750 uh, interactive web-based modules, lectures, information. Uh, it's an online uh, resource for our users. So I'm gonna open up one of our examples here. Uh, and we see there's uh, learning objectives and a great amount of information uh, that I can learn from. But I'm going to show you one of our animated uh, web objects here. Crackles can be heard during inspiration or expiration. Fine crackles can be caused by collapsed alveoli popping open during inspiration and may clear with deep breathing. And thank you very much. That has been the student experience. I will now pass it back over to Mark. Great, thank you so much, Nikki. So as a faculty member, what's gonna happen next is I will log back in. I will open up my active class and I will be able to see my students' performance. So I will have a graph that's going to <clears throat> highlight the number of attempts and how the students have performed if it's on a specific case or as a class as an average. And then also I'll be able to notice that uh, Nikki on the right-hand side, you see there's a red indicator, it says 51. So Nikki has completed the case. So I'll be able to open up Nikki's uh, profile, again, see her performance in all of her cases. And I'll click on feedback, see details. And from here, I will be able to see the same chart that Nikki saw when she completed her case. So again, being able to identify how she's performed in history taking, how she's gone through her physical examination, what she's uh, completed or what she had missed, where she needs some improvement, in investigations, diagnosis, management, and treatment. Uh, we also do have customers who use, um, who do classes focusing on practicing uh, patient charting as well. So this is also an additional exercise that could be done. So again, we could export it, we can review, provide feedback. Now we're going to go back into the feedback page. 
And so once we've reviewed your performance, we'll go ahead, we'll write uh, a format to feedback, click save feedback. And now that's gonna be pushed to Nikki. And then Nick will, again, we'll be able to see how Nikki has responded by working on additional attempts on those cases. Now, <clears throat> once a class has been completed, we will have the option for a summative assessment. So I just opened up one here, a summative assessment on a, on a class that's already been completed. So what we can do is we can click on the assessment. We can see a summary of the performance, performance snapshot. And again, going through those four, <clears throat> those four points that we had uh, created earlier, the student has completed all of their assignments. The student has responded to the feedback and has worked to improve the clinical skills, clinical reasoning, and critical thinking. The student has reached the required level of performance, and the student has had a good overall attitude towards the online education process and virtual learning environment. We can then write a comment, pass or to fail the student. So in this case, we will uh, pass Nikki, and we'll just go here, just open up the class. And here we will have a certificate that will be generated. And this can be sent uh, into the LMS or into the Dean's office to the student. <clears throat> this will also be branded by your institution as well. So in a very, uh, that was a very brief introduction to cyber patients. As mentioned, there are 130 cases that can be utilized across 13 different systems. Um, you will be able to see that the platform is very flexible. Of course, for uh, medicine programs, we've also seen now for nursing, uh, nursing programs have been using it, uh, uh, pharmacy programs for patient assessment, physician assistant uh, programs as well. So the platform is very versatile and we'd love to open it up for any um, additional uh, questions. And of course, uh, Dr. Kiyumi, if you have some additional comments uh, that you might like to share, that'd be uh, greatly valued. So thank you so much. No, thank you very much, uh, Mark. It was done very well. Thank you. you Nikki, it was very good. Um, uh, for the interest of time, we just like to give our colleagues the uh, opportunity to ask questions. Um, Dr. From my side, I just want to congratulate you. It's a very, it's, it's a beautiful pl platform. And I believe it's going to make it so much easier for all the medical and nursing schools out there. And I can't wait for us to get involved. With thank you so much. Okay. Any questions? I don't see any questions in the chat or question and answer box. Um, I don't know. We do have um, a couple of universities involved as well as um, hospitals that is here. So if I may ask a question on behalf of the hospital nursing schools, is this a good platform for the nursing schools which only concern for nursing students? Yes, I, I, uh, Mark, can you, can you answer that question for nursing schools? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, so, you know, cyber patient, you know, as it is a stepwise progression platform, uh, we do see that, you know, the level one history taking, level two, the physical examination is widely used in nursing programs. Um, however, also for the, you know, for example, um, uh, nurse practitioner programs, you know, uh, for example, in D Dalhousie University here in Canada, they're using, um, all four levels of cyber patient for the nurse practitioner programs. But as I mentioned earlier, very versatile and of course, um, well positioned to support uh, nursing programs. And you know, if there are additional uh, cases that are, that are needed, of course, um, one of the opportunities that we have at cyber patient is to really work closely with our partners and customers to collaborate and also building additional cases. Thank you, Mark. Um, and then just one more question that I received during the week. Um, how will the solution fit in between the library and a, 
um, virtual learning environment, like a tech, tech lab where the students sit and they do technical work. Um, can the two be can it, can it be collaborated? Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, so the platform can be can be utilized as a self learning tool. Um, however, as I mentioned earlier, for the we do recommend that it be integrated into the curriculum or integrated into some class programs. And just like you would have a an assigned textbook that you would that you would give to your students. Same ideas for cyber patient is that you know as you are running out different uh, classes and programs, of course. You know, use it as an assigned, um, like an assigned textbook. Uh, on the on the library model, if you know, you can have students will have their own accounts, so they'll also be able to have their individual uh, performance, and you'll be able to support them as needed uh, for you know any additional feedback or uh, assessment that could be done. One of the one of the really interesting ways some of our customers are also looking at cyber patient. Uh, so, for example, we're just about to launch a, a research partnership uh, with uh, with Stanford on uh, student remediation. So, you know, students who are needing additional tools and support to bring them up to um, the level that they should be. So, cyber patient is definitely as a as a tool that's well positioned to support in many different capacities. That's wonderful. Thank you. I guess we do have a question. Is it possible for us to get the trial access um, for cyber patient? And then Mark, if you can maybe just also mention about the pilot project, if, if you have time for that, if for South Africa. I'm sorry, I missed the I missed the second part. I apologize. <laughs> no, um, I just wondered if you can mention about the pilot project for South Africa, if there's a, a faculty that that is interested in it, um, that we would like to work with them from the beginning up until graduation. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So yes, yeah, so trials are um, absolutely possible. What we what we like to do with the trial is that we do, there's, there's two types of trials. One, if you just want to go onto the platform and just test out a case, you're welcome to go to app.cyberpatient.ca and maybe Nikki, if you wouldn't mind typing that into the chat, and you can you can just sign up for a free account, and you can access three uh, virtual patients on there. However, what we do like to the trials that we do like to, to work with our partners is that if there is a serious interest, is that we should do a data driven trial together. What we do is we take around twenty students and two or three faculty members, and we will run a virtual class for a one month period. So two weeks, uh, we'll, we'll start working on the cases with the students. And then throughout that time, we will provide them a formative feedback. And then we'll have the students work through the cases again. So the students should work on the cases a minimum of three times on each case that is in that class. Uh, so that way we can together, we can make sure that we pull data to highlight the efficacy outcome, and we'll also run a satisfaction survey at the end of that uh, end of that program, uh, in which you'll be able to get the feedback from the faculty as well as the feedback from the students. So, two types of trials options, and of course, um, yeah, I know uh, Rensha, we've we've spoken about healthcare libraries and you and also introducing it as a self learning resource uh, to some institutions. Yes, we'd be very happy to um, look at um, you know pilot projects, and you know one of the great things about um, simulation and you know this um, call it you know pi it, it's really pioneering. This is a, a new way to learn. We've had interactive textbooks for a long time, and now we've had uh, we've had video lectures, which has been been really popular. And now this is the next the next stage in the medical education is really um interactive hands-on learning the simulation so you know if you are interested in really pioneering medical education you know cyber patient is um is ready to to work with you and, and to support that uh that those initiatives and i know dr kayumi um is very passionate about um 
research when it comes to medical education and different ways of learning. And so, of course, I'm sure if there is, you know, as part of a, a part of a collaboration and partnership, you know, if there's research that's interested, you know, Dr. Kiyomi and our team will be more than happy to uh, to support as well in that regard. Um, I see that there's another question. Uh, sorry, yeah. it says, uh, can um, it also be integrated into the learning management system? Yeah. Yes, we would be happy to. We would be happy to look at uh, integration into an LMS. But however, you, you have noticed inside of CyberPatient is that it does have a an inbuilt LMS that's really intended to support that medical learning learning environment. And so, to be quite to be quite honest with you, you know, most of our customers, it is a very common question: Can we integrate it into our LMS? But most of them are very satisfied with the LMS that we've included because it does include that formative feedback and the summative assessment. And you're not going to have those same features inside of your um, other platforms, such as Moodle. Okay. But again, yeah, we're happy to happy to support. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Dr. Kimi. Yeah. So a, a few points here um, I would like to make. Um, what, what already uh, Mark said to just emphasize on those points. Uh, one is that, uh, yes, we can uh, integrate cyber patient to any platform, it's not a problem, uh, any LMS. But what cyber patient has is not an LMS, it's, it's not a, a learning management system, it's a case management system. So no learning platform, no learning management system in the world has a case learning management system. So um, you would never find um, anywhere in any learning management system um, a, um, a clinical education system for a specific uh, case-based learning. Uh, so that's one thing. So, but yes, you can use this, as Mark said, independently as a case uh, learning management system, or we can use the case learning management system integrate with your um, uh, you know, learning management system. The other point that um, I would like to make in relation to your um, question on uh, how can we use uh, cyber patient, I would say the sky is the limit. It uh, depends on your imagination and your curriculum design but cyber patient can be integrated in any part of your curriculum um, from uh, you know, uh, problem-based learning and case-based learning um, uh, from um, enforcing your theoretical knowledge from bridging your theoretical knowledge to practice of medicine and also to um, prepare your students for, for practical medicine. Um, and um, unfortunately in the past, the idea was that, well, we're gonna give lectures to the students and we have patients for students to practice on. Uh, no longer it, it's ethically appropriate. What, we did that in the past because we didn't have any other means of not harming a patient or not, not giving problems to the healthcare system. But um, we know uh, uh, that we, we do um, uh, give problems to the healthcare system. Uh, with our students. Nobody likes students in the hospital. <laughs> it slows down things, it makes things. So if, so the, the whole idea of cyber patients is to prepare students for clinical practice so that they have, they, they improve their uh, compiled thinking and recall recognition memory so much so that when they go to the clinics, they know exactly, oh, this is not the right drug to do. This is not the right liquid. This is not, we're not gonna put this patient into the hospital. It's an outpatient um, um, a case or, or so on and so forth. So decision-making is, is, um, is um, scary at time, you know, in a clinical situation by a um, immature um, student. And that's why, uh, because we don't wanna harm the patient, we, we make the medical education very ineffective and slow uh, so that we take the hands of students and slowly move them forward. This, with cyber patient, you have the opportunity to preload um, students with clinical thinking um, and decision-making um, in clinical competencies so that when they go um, to the clinic, they have 
a feeling of familiarity. Um, they're not thinking about textbooks, how it, how it is done. They know exactly how in a practical sense it's done. So um, yes, in, in, uh, in Stanford, uh, we're, we're uh, using cyber patient in three different areas um, um, as part of our future research with them. One is the remediation. If your student fail, a lot of students fail, um, the best way to do that is to not uh, load again the, the clinical um, uh, environment, the real clinical environment, to give them cyber patient when practice and come back. Uh, this is this is a, a, a wonderful area to do that. And the second one is the uh, students who goes for uh, leaving for some reasons, maternity leave, um, sick leave, um, other problems uh, in life. Um, in Stanford, actually 70% of their students go to PhD that have an MD PhD program. So after the first year of medical school, they go to a, a PhD program for two years. And then when they come back, they forgot everything. So they said that would be wonderful for people who are absent uh, in a certain time to say, okay, you are sick or your, your, your mother is sick or your family problems or some other reasons. So then uh, here's cyber patient, you can reach it from anywhere, anything so that you can keep your clinical skills in, intact uh, when you come back. Um, the other um, area that they would like to use cyber patient is to, um, uh, to give additional opportunity uh, for those uh, uh, you know, situation where you don't have the patient in, in the work. And the patients are not coming um, as we want them to come for our students. They come as they get sick. So most of the time, like for example, in my case, in my, I'm, I'm teaching for 40 years. Um, when I'm in the ward, when my students are in the ward, I want to show this patient's part of the curriculum while I don't have the patient in the ward. So the, the, the best way now, Stanford thinks the best way to do that and say, look, we, we have 10 cases, for example, in, in, in cardiac surgery that for you to, to understand. I can show you only three cases because I have it here now, but all the other six cases you can go in and do, and do it on cyber patients. So that is, it's better than not having experience at all. So that, that's the other way. So these are extra ways of, of using. But right now, people are using mostly cyber patient for um, gaining um, introduction to clinical medicine and nursing and, and medical students, uh, which is history taking, physical examination and so on, uh, decision making. But also um, many universities are using this uh, for uh, as a prerequisite to clinical rotations. So um, before, and people are very happy about that because before um, students will go to a clinical rotation like pediatrics and they never seen a, uh, a, you know, a, a child sick, you know, so I, they don't know what to do. But then they, they said, okay, well, before the pediatric rotation, you go and do pediatrics. Um, you have a minimum score of 70, then they come and then they're, Totally, they have totally different experience, learning more and better, and, and it's safer for the environment than for everyone, and it's easier for the teacher to to uh, to teach. So th those are the kind of um, environments that you can use it. But as I said, the, the sky is the limit. You can do whatever you want. The last thing that I would like to say is that um, uh, Mark mentioned about the research that is my passion. Yeah, it is my passion, but it's more passion of the junior faculty in any university. And it's a passion of any university to put their, um, uh, their rating scores up because that's research is the only, uh, publishing papers doing research is the only way you can, you can actually improve your performance um, and gain more, um, uh, I would say, and go to the higher level um, of, of rating. Uh, when it pertains to international rating of universities. So, um, so research um, is not just my passion, it's also a um, very useful tool for universities to put themselves into higher rank, but also more important, important it is for young um, um, faculty 
uh, to, to, to improve uh, their uh, performance as a faculty, to go into a uh, different level of uh, academic ranking from assistant professor to associate professor to professor. Um, I, I know I've been in this environment, as I said, for 40 years, and, um, and um, I have been in all the committees. And in most of the committees, clinicians, they don't get promotion. And the reason they don't get promotion is because they don't know how to do research. Um, and um, the, the, you have to have a PhD or a master's in order to learn how to do biochemical research or, or some other. So the only kind of research clinicians do is, is uh, drug testing and trials and things like that. So, um, but educational research, drug testing and trials is, is troublesome. I'm on the ethics committee of UBC and, and once the, the name of a, a pharmaceutical company comes, then, then the flag, the red flag goes on and, and the ethical approval is so difficult. But, um, uh, but anyway, it's, it's not valued as a scientific method anyway, as a scientific paper. Um, go, oh, they had a, a pharmaceutical trial. But what is nowadays important is to do educational research, to, to look at your efficacy, cost effectiveness, reliability, um, you know, uh, validity, um, at memory retention, at all these things that there's a huge area. Now, people did not do a lot of educational research because, okay, well, how much educational research you can do on books, right? But now cyber patients has opened a new door to educational research. And any, uh, um, edu uh, any uh, faculty member, particularly young faculty member, uh, can, can have the opportunity to publish papers, to do grants, to, to, make, you know, to, to make a difference. And uh, yes, I will be more than happy to support uh, those initiatives when, when, when it comes to, uh, to research. Uh, in, in fact, one of my PhD students in Bulgaria is, is uh, presenting his, his uh, research paper um, uh, next month, and I'm, I'm invited to go to Bulgaria to support him. And also they, ask, they want me to do some lectures and things, but, uh, but he's doing a very interesting uh, project he did the clinical rotation um, uh, for pediatrics from for all medical school students. And he divided students into two categories, the ones who use cyber patient and how did not use cyber patient and the how used just traditional. And the third group used um, very advanced expensive mannequins. And, and guess what? His research has shown that two months after uh, they, the memory drops on, on physical simulators and on, on traditional uh, learning, but memory retention is significantly higher with cyber patient. It's because of the drilling, because you can do a lot of drilling. Like I can go to a, I can go to a, um, a medical um, environment as a student, um, and I can see maybe during rotation, maybe five, 10 patients, um, and only once every patient. But with cyber patient, and, and even as a doctor, as a, as a cardiac surgeon, for me to have 10 patients, it take a year for me to send for CT scans and to send for cat labs and to send for this and that. So by the time the patient comes to me to operate and then to follow up, it takes like months. But here, you can go through a cyber patient within 15 to oh, minutes to half an hour. So you gain that years of experience very fast and you can do it more often. That's why perhaps, uh, you know, the memory retention is, is much higher. So I don't want to take much of your time about all these things. I can talk about this all, that, all day, but I wanted to emphasize on those three points that Mark was making. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Doctor. That's very interesting to know. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Mark, thank you so much for your time. You must have a wonderful day. Dr. Kayumi. Thank you. I appreciate it. Once again, thank you for your time as well. 
Um, thank you, everybody that joined our session this afternoon. Nadia, thank you for holding the fort while I was still trying to connect. Um, no we'll definitely come back to you. And um, if there's any questions, um, they, I've sent they have all my email addresses. So I will be in contact with everybody that registered. Some of them didn't join, but those who had joined, thank you very much for joining. I will be in contact with you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you too. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye.